All right, guys. Hello. Welcome to the Vetted Podcast. I'm Patrick. We got Amy and Sebastian here. We are going to be uh, going over some exciting stuff in the UFO community. A lot. I mean, a lot has happened in the last week. Uh, David Grush came out with a brand new interview from Jesse Michaels. It's over two hours long. Great, like, documentary. So we're going to be looking over some clips of that. Um, and you may have seen these alien bodies all over the news. What is that? Uh, so the Mexican Congress in, in Mexico City um, live streamed what they purported to be two um, alien bodies. So we're going to dig into that and see some response from that as well. Um, and then on top of that, NASA released their long awaited UAP study report. Um, so we're going to be going over that too. And this morning, I saw that Jeremy Corbell tweeted out that this week apparently is going to be a huge week in the UFO, you know, space uh, because um, Congress is getting back from recess and they're going to be implementing some UAP legislation. So we'll take a look at that and what that means. And yeah, so exciting times uh, in the UFO community. So welcome to Vetted. Let's jump in. How we doing, Amy, Sebastian? How y'all doing? Pretty good. Yeah, That's really well. Good. What, uh, so y'all saw, let, let's just start with these alien bodies, just because I think that's like maybe the first thing that people are <laughs> like, what is this? Is this real? Is this not real? What do we think? Um, you know, some people are just like, it's a hoax. Other people are like, not so fast. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. What were y'all's first reactions to, to seeing that? I mean, they look like ET, right? Very weird. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like it was the first time we've seen anything, I guess, tangible. Yeah, that is evidence as such. But as Sebastian said, it looked almost like it had been created in you know what our imagination thinks an alien is. It had been created in that figure. You know, it was just an ET, <laughs> an ET model or whatever it was. So. I, I thought it was interesting, but I'm still not totally sold. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Sebastian? Same. Oh, yeah, the same. I mean, I think it looked, I mean, they had all these scans right off their brain and stuff, right? Like, yeah. so I'm sorry, my throat's a bit sore, so it's not, uh, that's all it is. Um, so, um, yeah, it looked promising, but I mean, when looking deeper into it, I mean, it became pretty clear that it's all a big hoax. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was quite, quite fascinating. And and to be yeah. fair, on this podcast, some of y'all remember, you know, I've said from the beginning, you know, they're gonna have to wheel out alien bodies at <laughs> these press conferences. You know, I, literally, I've been quoted saying that, and they did that. Yeah, they did um, it. Yeah, that's what I mean. But, so it was right. the first thing we've seen that we've been asking for, but totally. now we're like, meh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because exactly the points y'all made. Um, it yeah. looked exactly what we think it looked like. It, it had all these whatever. But I will say, uh, you know, initially I dug in and yeah, it's a hoax, all this stuff. They've looked at it before previously. But then I will say I did come across some people that are pretty well respected in the UFO community who are putting a pause on this saying, well, wait a second. Yeah. There may be something to this, actually, which is weird. And so it's kind of having this roller coaster moment. Um, so I don't know. We, you know, maybe um, Gary Nolan, uh, who we have tried to get on the podcast as well. He is saying that he wants to look into it. So I, but he said he already looked into something before, but he like he wants to get hands on, which, OK, let's get a Galileo Project is also saying they're going to get hands on on this. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe maybe something will come out, but yes, at first glance, it looks ridiculous. It it hundred percent looks ridiculous. Um, yeah. In fact, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna share something here real quick, just because. Come on, let's. Uh, this is funny. Yeah, um, Amy Amy sent an Instagram um, of the UFO, and they figured what it is. They figured it out. Okay, so we're gonna let me share this so we can see it. Um, and to be fair. <laughs> Uh, James Fox, okay, the famous James Fox, he also mm -hmm. shared this um, on his Instagram. So um, can y'all see what I'm sharing here? Yeah. Alien reveal. Let's 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 watch it again here. There it is. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a cake, y'all. It's a cake. 
it's that's a cake. What that's that. what it was. That's how they that was uh the catering for the event. Um <laughs> I mean, these guys did a great job, too, right? Like, that looks so just like, yeah, so quick, too. They responded so quick, and that looks like what they presented, um, essentially. So, yeah, I thought that was funny, and a lot of people had a laugh about it, um, So, which is what we yeah. uh, need to do on this. So, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. How all do good I... fun. Right, yes, yes, it's, it's definitely all in good fun. Um, okay, there we go. Let me stop. I think also, I'm <clears throat> sorry. I think also the guy who brought it up has not a lot of credibility, right? He, he has Correct. been discredited before. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not sure he's trying. <laughs> he's been discredited, but again, there's also people saying like, well, wait a second, maybe, um, you know, there's more to, again, maybe there's more to it. I don't know. Um, yeah. And so re real quick, I did want to read out a tweet from uh because at this hearing ryan graves was there so he's one of the three people who testified at the mm -hmm. house oversight congressional hearing right in july so um merge podcast um you know one of the pilots who has sightings right very well known and he was at there uh, at this hearing and he also testified but this is the tweet he put out so let me read this here um and i'll put it on the screen um for for y'all to see um uh for the listeners sorry uh, i'm not going to share for this but uh, so I, ryan graves tweets out after the u.s congressional ufo hearing i accepted an invitation to testify before the mexican congress hoping to keep up the momentum of government interest in pilot experiences with uap unfortunately yesterday's demonstration was a huge step backwards for the issue my testimony share, centered on sharing my experience in the UAP reports I hear from commercial and military air crew through ASA's witness program. I will continue to raise awareness of UAP as an urgent matter of aerospace safety, national security, and science. But I'm deeply disappointed by this un unsubstantiated stunt. So, yeah, even he was like, what the hell because it, it, they didn't know it was going to happen so he's just sitting there and then they wheel out alien bodies he's like what is going on here i can't imagine what must have been going through his mind like well there goes my credibility right like but uh hopefully not i also read that um it wasn't a real hearing um you can you can i don't know if this is the right way to say it, but you can sort of pay to set these up like renting a convention center at a hotel sort of scenario. So they weren't technically under oath. It wasn't technically uh, a congressional hearing in Mexico City. So I think that's important to note because that is being floated around that it was they're under oath. It was a real not really. They, you know, it was just like, uh, on you know, honor system sort of scenario. So it's not like this guy could be held liable uh, for what he said. So anyway, yeah, uh, well, I am going to do another video um, <laughs> on on vetted this week to sort of come back to it, because I said that when I live streamed it um, or, or showed part of the live stream that I'd come back after doing a little research and I'll give a better update on it. So look out for that video this week um, and we'll yeah, we'll go from there. All right. Any last thoughts on that? I'm going to move on to the next. Next thing here. Nothing to add. I, I do think it's good. We're laughing about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, we got we we yes. Yeah, we have to. <laughs> we have to. Um, I, I think so. Um, all right. So the next thing I want to discuss is NASA's UFO uh report um they released. So I'm gonna be looking at that BBC article I shared with you guys in Slack. And uh I, I thought this was a great article that summarized sort of what we learned from the live stream. Um, so they did like a press conference. And then they also released online their report, um, which I'll also put a link to um, in the description so you can go see the report for yourself and and what you make of it. Um, I also live stream the m most of the hearing. There were some technical difficulties that day. They were atrocious. Even they had technical difficulties. Their live stream stopped. Um, so everyone was having problems. Uh, but anyway, yes. Um, so NASA, again, they've been asked to sort of jump into the space alongside Arrow 
um, the all domain anomalous resolution office to look into UAPs, right? So some of the conclusions they made, again, the report's 36 pages. We'll put a link to it so you can see. And these are basically some key takeaways that the BBC reported on. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, there's no proof aliens exist, but they might. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? That's kind of like Shot we horror. were, we were our, wasn't that already the conclusion? Um, so it says the very last page of the report said there was no reason to conclude that extraterrestrial sources are behind the hundreds of UAP sightings NASA has investigated. However, if we acknowledge that as one possibility, then those objects must have traveled through our solar system to get here. Although the report did not conclude extraterrestrial life exists, NASA didn't deny the possibility of excuse me, potential unknown alien technology operating in Earth's atmosphere. So, I mean, that's kind of an interesting uh, statement, right? Um, they're, they're still saying it's a possibility uh, and not eliminating that. Uh, the second point they made is limited amount of UAP data. So Nicola Fox, the Associate Administrator for NASA Science Mission Directorate, Directorate? I don't know how you say that, Directorate said okay. UAP are one of our planet's greatest mysteries. And that is mainly because of the lack of high quality data. Okay. Despite numerous reported UAP sightings, Ms. Fox said there typically isn't enough data that can be used to make definitive scientific conclusions about the nature and origin of UAP. Ms. Fox announced that NASA has appointed a new director of UAP research to establish a robust database for the evaluation of future data. The director will use AI and machine learning in the data gathering and analysis process, which that's interesting. Um, they also, during the press conference, said, um, we're not going to name this director. We're, we're trying to safeguard him from, you know, I don't know, scrutiny, you know, hate from people, I, I you know, whatever. Directly afterwards, I guess there was a lot of pushback. They directly afterwards named him. And said, you know, who he was and and whatever. Um, in fact, real quick here, maybe I, we, I should say that name. New NASA UAP director. Okay, here it is. Uh, let's see his name. Um, okay, let me come back to that. I can't find that right away here. Is it Nicola Fox? Is that... Is that is is it the is it the per no 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 here no, no sorry. here yeah, it I mean, is here it is Mark oh man Mark McKer McKinnery Mark McKinnery oh gosh uh he was previously NASA's liaison to the Defense Department he will become the research director for UAP so um I will put up a picture right now for y'all to see that I'll do in post production. Bam, there it is. Um, yeah, so anyway, they named them. Um, and uh, yeah, the the AI and machine learning, they talked about that a lot in the press conference and using that to sort of, right, bring all this, <laughs> summarize the data, and I, which I think is smart. I think it's smart to, to do that. Although I did hear some comments like, if we're looking for a needle in a haystack, is it smart to add more to the haystack? I don't know. If yeah, that's a good point. You know, like, are we getting yeah. too much data? Is it too much? It's just yeah. getting overwhelming, right? And it's just like too much. So I don't know. And who made that point? Jesse Michaels. We'll be talking about him later uh, in that David Grush documentary. Um, NASA weighs in on viral alien photos from Mexico. Uh, BBC reporter Sam Cabral asked the NASA panel about a series of photographs. It wasn't just photographs. It was video uh, purported. I mean, they pro they pulled them out of boxes right there. Uh, purported extraterrestrials that were presented to Mexican authorities earlier this week. A self-proclaimed UFO expert, Jaime Mauson, brought to a congressional hearing what he presented as two ancient non-human alien corpses. He claims the bodies had been found in Cusco, Peru in 2017 and that radiocarbon testing dated the objects to be up to 1,800 years old. Yeah, it was, it was the, the exact dating was 700 to 1,800 years old. So that's quite a spectrum. 
Uh, the authenticity of the specimens has been greeted by heavy skepticism in scientific circles, and Mr. Malson himself has previously made, previously made claims of extraterrestrial life that were debunked. NASA scientist da Dr. David Spurgle told the BBC, make samples available to the world scientific community, and we'll see what's there. All right. I mean, that's a fair answer, right? To that at the end of the day. So, yeah, yeah. they right. I mean, I, I think that's a fair answer. Again, if we're asking, like, well, bring us the alien bodies. Well, then we should look into it as crazy as it is. It, you kind of have to at this point just to put it so people stop talking about it. Right. Because otherwise it'll just stay in the lore uh, if we don't just debunk it right away, and get it out of the way. Um, and supposedly yeah. that is going to happen. I saw I saw a Spanish language interview um, because I speak Spanish, y'all, so I'm able to translate it. Uh, and basically he got in this fight with this with this journalist on TV and he said, like, nope, we're going to be doing a um, another live stream where we're going to be showing like X-rays and doing the scientific so like right there and people, you know. But other people are like, no, that's not good enough. We need to test it, you know, not see again what you're going to do. So anyway, be on the lookout for that. I'm sure we'll cover it. Uh, any thoughts or anything before? I, there's still a couple more points I want to use or I want to go over here with this. Don't want to. If y'all had anything to say. All right, let's see here. The last. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Amy. Uh, I'm just I'm just thinking. I don't I don't think I have anything to add. It's just. Yeah. No, carry on. Carry on, Patrick. All right. Uh, identity of new UFO boss remains a mystery because of threats. OK, so we that's clearly they, they took care of that. Um, but yeah, that was their initial reasoning for not wanting to name him. But at the end of the day, like, how could they have not named him eventually? Yeah. Right. Like um, and then NASA recommends using AI tools. So artificial intelligence. But do we do we know who threatened him? Nobody in particular, they were just worried about it because they had seen it in the community before. That's what they said at the press conference, right? They had seen the sort of hate, quote unquote, for Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, for instance. And they're like, OK, who is the director of Arrow? Right. So they're like, how, how can we keep basically like we want him to just have to do work and not have to wor work on avoiding hate and, you know, dealing with that, like just on research. But again, it's the just pushback. social media, right? So. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just social media. Exactly. They're worried about Twitter trolls, essentially. <laughs> um, so I'm glad they named them and put it out yeah. there. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, but at the same time, I can understand that concern. You know, I've gotten lots of hate myself uh, and I'm a nobody. So, like, imagine this guy. Right. Um, I mean, I've been called the government shill more times than I ever thought possible in my life. Uh, so, you know, I can I could. Reddit, Twitter, it can be a cesspool uh, for for bad stuff. Uh, people take this very seriously. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they named them. I mean, I mean, you also need to, in this day and age, you know, I mean, you need to be just grown up about it, right? I mean, yeah. so you just have to live with it, right? I mean, find a way to live yeah. with it. I mean, yeah, you know, it's it, not okay, of course, yeah. abuse, any type of abuse is not okay, but I mean, sure. you know, I guess it's normal today, right? And to a certain extent. Absolutely. It's just part of the just part of it yeah you just gotta learn to ignore it yeah um, i'm sure he gets, uh, he gets a big pay package you know so yeah yeah totally. i can think of that while he tries to the comments yeah. right <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. He, he has his bank account open on one end of the screen and the comments here yeah. and he just oh just keeps getting reminded you're good let it go i mean i happily be abused online you know if yeah. I make some, <laughs> a year for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny yeah absolutely um, and then the last part here of this article, uh, which, again, um, we'll put a link to so you can see it. Uh, it's just NASA recommending using AI tools. And that, 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 that was a big part of their press conference as well as these new tools to sort of, you know, look up all this. So they're saying artificial and machine learning are essential tools for identifying UAPs. The public is also considered a critical aspect of understanding UAP. That's interesting. Yeah. NASA, which has said one of its biggest challenges of better understanding and identifying UAPs is a lack of data, aims to plug that gap through crowdsourcing techniques. This includes open source smartphone based apps and other smartphone metadata from multiple citizen observers worldwide. 
There's currently no standardized system for aggregating and organized civilian UAP reports, the report said, resulting yeah. in sparse and incomplete data. So, okay, let's go, right? Like, um, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I, so I guess the government's going to release some app you can use, right? Like UFO app. We're all going to download it and pull that open when we see a UFO. I don't know what that means exactly. Um, I think they're trying to include yeah. the public and their thought, right? Like include them and say, you know, you're important. Let's bring you in. Let's let's all do this together, which, in my opinion, that's a smart move, I think, uh, to be honest with you. I think you know, downplaying it to the public, making them feel like, you know, this is a joke or you're idiots or you're crazy. It's definitely not the way to go either, even if that's how you feel. Um, and just bringing them along for the ride to the truth, maybe that's their goal. Like, yeah, we'll bring you along. We'll show you the truth. And there it is. It's just, you know, drones from China or whatever the case may be, or our own secret technology or ETs made out of cake. But yeah. <laughs> We don't know. We don't know. So, yeah, that's the report from NASA. Uh, nothing mind boggling in there. Like if you actually open up the report, um, in fact, all the pictures they show are of like weather phenomenon. So they're not I think they're trying to subtly say like a lot of this stuff is just, you know, normal things happening that we just can't under we, we can't process in a you know, in a human way, um, but that they're going to look into this you know, and see what it is. So, I mean, at the end of the yeah. day, what more, what more can there be? So, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. the, that's the NASA report. Any, any final thoughts on that? I don't know. I mean, the AI stuff's interesting, isn't it? I just, yeah. like you, Patrick, I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't know if that, that's yeah. showing my age slightly, but I just, I just don't see how, how it, how it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah, you're right. We'll see. We'll see what they do. Are the, yeah, are the apps for the general population, general public, or are they? They are, aren't they? Because it says something about citizen observership or something, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Is, is it gonna be like, no, that's not a U UAP or a UFO. It's a and then whatever. If you see an alien, you can report them online. Oh, it's not yeah. an alien. It's just my husband. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's essentially. Uh, well, you know, on the iPhone, I don't know if you know, there's this feature you can use your camera and you can point it like at your dog, and it'll bring up this like yeah, information yeah, yeah. box and tell you, oh, it's this kind of dog and this. Yeah, sort of thing. okay. And maybe it's gonna be like that. You point it up at the UFO. It's like, oh, it's a flare, or it's a. Or what if it's like, oh yeah, that's that's a UF, that's an ET. Be careful. Uh, yeah, yeah I don't... it's cake. Yeah, it's cake. <laughs> it's a cake. Um, I like. Yeah, I'm curious how all of this is going to go. But look, the government is doing taking steps they've never taken before. So, yeah, uh, yeah, know, yeah. Positive, right. If you're yeah. in the UFL community, this is what you asked for. This is what you wanted. Yeah. You want people to look into this on a government level, and that's what they're doing. They may yeah. not come to the conclusion you want. That's maybe where the difference is. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So next thing is really just um pull up my, my tweets here so I can share my screen. Is David Grush interview um, on Jesse Michaels channel. Um bombshell didn't know it was coming. Nobody knew it was coming. It dropped like on midnight out of nowhere. I saw it the first night it came out. It only had a couple thousand views at the time I saw it. It's well over. It's almost 2 million um, at this point. So I was one of the first people to watch it. Um, and it's fascinating. It's two hours. It's a great, it's a documentary. I mean, it's so well put together. It's not just David Grush's interview. He interlaces it kind of like I did with Vetted, but just interlaced with all these other different parts yeah. with the interview and exploring the UFO lore and different parts about it. I think if you don't know much about UFOs or anything, this is a great way to get into it because it explains a lot from the beginning to where we are now and different, you know, it's really, really well made. Um, so I recommend people to uh, to check it out, whether you believe in it or not. It's just a well-made thing to watch and it's interesting and they don't make any definitive statements. It's just proposing different ideas and a lot of research was put into it. They worked a lot, you know, very hard on it um 
you know, over a course of months following David Grush around. Um, I go into a little more detail on a YouTube video I made uh, on the vetted channel of Jesse Michaels and some background on him that might be interesting. Um, how he connects to like Lou Elizondo and some other things. Um, some of the same places I saw from some of his other videos with Lou Elizondo. So like they go on the same paths, hiking and stuff. And that's interesting. I don't know. Um, uh, Jesse Michaels mentioning that he knew David Grush from two years ago and he met him two years ago from a friend in the Air Force that he had. So a friend that Jesse Michaels had in the Air Force served with David Grush. And that's how he met David Grush. But famously, David Grush's story has been that a year ago, one year ago, he met Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp and then Ross Coulthart. And that's how his interview and stuff came about. So what Jesse is suggesting is that a year prior to that, he's been speaking with David Grush and he's known about all this, which would set Jesse Michaels at the forefront of sort of knowing David Grush. But also... Jesse Michaels is good friends with Lou Elizondo and Lou Elizondo sure. behind the scenes has been connecting David Grush. And honestly, I think the information I got last year, Sebastian, if you remember in the summer, uh, the secret project that Lou Elizondo was working on, I'm, I'm about 95% positive. This is it. It's David Grush and his coming out and everything. Um, I'm, you know, so Without knowing, I found out about this last year, in my opinion, but I didn't know what it was. And I can't say who told me that, but it's a source, private, very well connected to Lou Elizondo, without a doubt. it's uh, I believe it. So anyway, I don't know. It makes it interesting. What have y'all seen from that? Anything? Or I don't know if y'all had a chance to watch any parts of it. I'm going to show but some. Did you, you watch the whole interview of it? Oh, yeah, yeah. I watched the whole thing. Did you watch the full two hours? Oh yeah, I watched it twice. Yeah, I watched it twice. And is there anything like? Is there is there anything? Um, I mean, is it worth watching? Is there anything? I mean, groundbreaking in there? Or is it just really rehashing the same stuff as before? I, I think it's absolutely well worth watching just for one reason. More than anything, you get to see a side of David Grush you haven't seen before. That is true. That is a new thing. It's a, definitely a different side of him where he's just candid. You see him loose and just casual. And I think that's a good benchmark for trying to get an idea of maybe his motives, where he's coming from. But that's what it talks about a lot, why he's doing this, you know, what, what, you know, the big reasons behind why he's doing it, but any new information that he hasn't already said about UFOs or alien bodies. No, nothing new. That's all been discussed in the thing, in the news nation interview. But again, a different side of him speculating about these things, talking about that's all new. And again, the, the detailed mm -hmm. work that Jesse Michaels does in between the interview, these other segments that he proposes a hundred percent well worth watching things I'd never considered before, to be honest with you. Uh, it's probably, in my opinion, is one of the best pieces about UFOs I've, I've, I've ever seen. If I'm being honest, um, and I've watched, a lot of stuff, uh, a lot. And yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, and we're going to go over a few clips here right now that I thought were were interesting. Yeah. Um, let's so let's watch one of them. One of them in particular was David Grush challenging Neil deGrasse Tyson to a debate. Because Neil deGrasse Tyson um, has been basically I don't, downplaying the whole ufo thing and you know mm. that that sort of thing so all right let's see where it is oh yeah right here so unedited clip of david grush challenging neil tyson to a debate notable radio silence on the other side come on neil retweet <laughs> if you want this to happen i'll pay 50k to charity of neil's choice if it happens on my show look at that <laughs> so look at that. All right, let's see here. Let me start it over. Get some audio. Not like okay, okay. Can y'all y'all can hear that? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right, here we go. 
I don't like throwing shade, but like Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? Oh, yeah. He's made up his mind. I've read his tweets, and I'm like, dude, you have a PhD in physics? Where's your curiosity? I right. can't even believe. Yeah, You're same. the big mm. scientific same. communicator? Well, I think you should probably retire. It's yeah. just mm. smug. Oh. It's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's smug, it's oh. smug yeah. and it's I know everything, and it's I went to this elite university, so I have the credentials to like tell you what you should think, instead of exploring these kind of really exciting open-ended questions. Should we count how many times he said that the universe was 13.8 billion years old? And just be like, you were wrong you were every wrong. single yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Credentialism, yeah. you know, and it's like, well, I have credentials too, and I'm happy to go toe to toe with you. Yeah, yeah if he wants to debate me, I'd be, oh, that, I'd I would be fun. Let's do it. Gary Nolan and I will debate Tyson. No. <laughs> oh, was it? Who's that other? Uh, Brian Cox. Bring yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring, bring it. Says, bring oh. it. I don't like throwing shade, but like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Right? Okay, so <laughs> what do y'all think of that? <laughs> <clears throat> Brian Cox is British, right? Yeah, I love Brian Cox. Uh, I, 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 I've watched his stuff for years. I'm a huge fan of that guy. He's, yeah, Brian Cox is brilliant, isn't he? Because he brings the, this this kind of world to the masses, and he does it in a way that's easy to understand, and yeah. likable, and uh, consumable, I suppose. So, um, I don't really understand why they're throwing shade at Brian Cox. I kind of get the Tyson uh, thing. hundred percent, but... I agree. Yeah, <laughs> it's a weird addition. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 all of this transparency stuff is is absolutely right. So I don't think there's any. We've already we've always said that healthy debate is exactly that. It's healthy debate, and it's important to to get to the to the the answers that we're we're all looking for. You know, on both sides of it. So. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, interesting, interesting way of going about it, I suppose. Yeah, I don't think Neil deGrasse Tyson and Brian Cox are like Brian Cox is not. He's so open to things and like curious and like willing to yeah. talk like Neil deGrasse Tyson. I understand, like you said. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree with your point. I don't know why they all of a sudden Brian Cox. I was like, what? That guy's what, what did he do? Like Sean Carroll, I'm a big fan of Sean Carroll and Brian Cox, honestly, and uh, yeah, yeah, Brian yeah. Green, this guy, uh, Brian Green. Um, uh, yeah, I I don't get it either. What do you think, Sebastian? What do you, do you think they should debate? Yeah, I mean the the whole thing. I mean, the, of course, the clip is really interesting, right? Yeah, it would be you know it would be interesting to have a debate. Yeah, I mean he's really good, Nile. Um, <clears throat> you know, um, Tyson. So it would be difficult to, um have a win the argument right but i mean yeah it's interesting yeah famously neil degrasse tyson doesn't debate that's like a big thing he said that multiple times in multiple interviews you know joe rogan famously is a pretty big clip of him mm. like he just doesn't debate doesn't believe in that um but at the same time you see him just going after people and his stuff and st so like you know it, it, he makes some pretty strong conclusions about people or things they said and then like well i don't want to debate it well, then why'd you say that? Yeah. Why'd you say all that if you're not willing to have somebody ask you some questions about that? But anyway, yes, it yeah, would be yeah, great. Yeah. It would be great, especially if there's something for charity, right? Um, that would be nice. Just a conversation and $50,000 can go to help some people. Uh, yeah, let's have that conversation just for the fact of charity, in my opinion. If yeah, I'm being honest. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. So, all right. I got more clips here. Again, th this was uh, that and this is unedited that 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 part in the documentary is much shorter okay. um, because they don't bring up Gary Nolan. They don't bring up Brian Cox that, that, that none of that is brought in. None of that's in there. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, you know what? Let's start with this clip, which is um, sort of a summary of a little bit of just the whole, there's the documentary as a whole. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Yes. Three men who previously served in the military are set to speak publicly about what they saw in the sky and heard behind closed doors. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Can we just talk? Yeah. So what happened yesterday? I didn't read the news. Certain presidents don't have a need to know on this topic. Unless you have to stroke a pen, assign like an executive order or something, well, why would you have a need to know? 
the guys that were involved in Manhattan were overlaying the same ecosystem of secrecy to protect stuff that they were protecting our nuclear secrets. Why aren't they releasing the Kennedy files? Nobody's right. alive 60 years, but every president. If something is not a nuke, but it has radiological energy coming off it, you know, alpha, beta decay, whatever. Same secrecy. Same secrecy. What is the connection with nuclear? Is it the kind of benevolent protector theory? Manhattan Project, they were kind of the first blue book. Do you think Bob Lazar is full of shit? Have we made any agreements with any of the aliens? Do you have a sense of, you know, the species? This is like the mega interview. We're covering every yeah. potential trippy slash conspiratorial oh. thing out at once. There it is, y'all. Oh, he's got little Rolling Stones in there. Holy cow. I was going to say. For, yeah, what's he going to pay for that? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, that's not in the documentary, so I don't know where. That must be just for the trailer here, uh, clearly. Um, yeah, so... I mean, that uh, definitely works as a teaser, doesn't it? It makes you want to watch the full thing. Absolutely. The I first see. five minutes from the basically the first five minutes, the first five minutes of that thing is is you'll know if you want to watch it after that, because it's yeah. just like a trailer first five minutes. And I played that on the video that I did on vetted um, yeah. where I promoted this, you know, this thing. I did play that first five minutes and went over it. So, yeah, um, you know, we asked him about Bob Lazar and his answer uh, you know, I'll spoil it here. His answer is basically like, because I, I, I really wanted to know that. He's like, yeah, I don't really know much about him, so I stay out of it. So he doesn't really give any concrete, uh, you know, on there. That That's a big thing people want to know. Is Bob Lazar yeah. now telling the truth? It, was he telling the truth? Is Has he been vindicated? Um, we all want to know. I personally don't think so. And do you, do you think, do you think like Jesse Michaels is as good an interview as Ross Cool thought? Personally, I think he's better. I'm being honest. I oh, love yeah, cool. I love Ross Coltart, but in my in my opinion, he sort of uh, uh, massages Dave Grush through the whole thing, you know, kind of in a way. And with Jesse Michaels, when you watch it, he's just he's just asking stuff, whether it's crazy or not, or pushing back on something, or you know. Yeah. And I like I appreciate that. Um, he's really smart, man. That that kid is is. He's really smart. Um, can tell he's. You know what his background? What his background is? Yeah, Jesse Michaels. Um, yeah, and that I, that's the vi you know in the video I talk about a lot of that because I don't know if it's interesting to people or not, but Jesse Michaels works for P uh, Peter Thiel, Thiel Capital, oh, um, right. and um, he's tr he's sort of been mentored by Peter Thiel for for many years, which is how Jesse Michaels started. Um, uh, what's it called? Um, really how he got into this because he worked with Eric Weinstein. Eric Weinstein works for Teal Capital as well. And Eric, Eric Weinstein and his brother, Brett are Eric more than anything is a big person sort of in this community. Um, and he got, he started his podcast for him called the portal. Um, you know, he's been doing interviews with UFO people on his channel for a long time. He's got some amazing interviews. Um, Graham Hancock, Gary Nolan, Jack Valet, um, gosh, tons of people that he, Lou Elizondo, he's got this, he's got this really inter interesting interview with Lou Elizondo that I don't think people have seen, to be honest. Um, yeah. So, but that's his background working in finance. Um, and he's made a lot of money through that, which is how he's able to offer 50 K, you know, for charity. Um, and it's just sort of like a hobby for him. Uh, to do this, but I do feel there's definitely more connections behind the scenes than we know about. And I think more people are connected in this community than people think that that's what I think, you know, it's not like it's all these separate groups. <laughs> They're all connected. Jeremy Corbell, Ross, right. All these guys, Lou Elizondo, David Grush, George, Nat they're all connected. They're all. Yeah. They're all having meetings and stuff behind the scenes, in my opinion. Um, all right. This is. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's watch this clip. So this is what it says here. Unedited version of UFO whistleblower David Grush expressing sympathy for Eric Weinstein's interest in a possible sequestering of physics in deep black aerospace accompanied by possibly intentional 
stagnation of academic physics. So a little background on what that means exactly. Brett Weinstein is famously, or Eric Weinstein on many podcasts for years, has been saying that science and physics in particular has been heisted, kidnapped by string theory and quantum mechanics, and that it has sort of stopped, you know, scientific endeavor and, you know, whatever that they've wasted their time for so long on working on string theory and quantum mechanics and they haven't actually done any physics and it's just ruined mm. the field um so yeah that, that's what they say you still with us sebastian oh there we go okay yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, i just had a bit of coughing yeah so oh oh right on no, no thank you thank you. For, you you saved us um <laughs> COVID, hey, COVID might go through the, the mics here. We don't know, y'all. We don't know everything about yeah. COVID. We don't know all the details. Um, all right, so let's take a look at this. It is uh, pretty interesting. My kind of you know, top logical physics. Oh, hang on. Let me start the beginning. You have some serious scientists, Bryce DeWitt and others, sort of looking into anti-gravity in the 50s. Do you have any opinion there, or did that not really come yeah, up? Yeah, it is kind of weird where, as far as I know, in my kind of you know, topological physics history knowledge, where there was all these anti-grav groups up until the early 60s, and then they totally vaporized. And I definitely share Eric's concern, because it does seem kind of strange. And then quantum gravity was developed. That seems to be you know, a cul-de-sac, where mm -hmm. we're not really making any progress that I could at least understand. And, you know, just kind of the bachelor's yeah. level of physics education. But yeah. I hope that the more open study of some of this stuff, you know, the material and everything, we could actually make some massive total leaps, you know, by bringing more people with probably stronger intellects that, that they probably have in the program right now, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because of their entry requirements from like a security perspective. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's another part of it that they were working on anti gravity and then they just stopped and switch to i don't know much about that patrick i don't know much about this anti-gravity work yeah i mean i'm i've nerded out on this stuff for years um yeah. behind the scenes aside from ufo stuff just science you know uh been very interested in that and um yeah i've uh, in one of our vetted videos God, i don't remember which one i explored this i showed a bunch yeah. of clips of of eric weinstein talking about it um witten i can't remember his first name but this guy named witten um, who he's deeply afraid of and how he's taken over science and scared all these other scientists from exploring other things and just having them focus on string theory. And, uh, you know, he he calls out Michu Kaku as like, he that guy's out of control. He's ruining science, you know. Yeah. Same thing with with uh, Brian Greene. He's, uh, he's had these arguments with him on podcast about how it's just ruined science and we're not getting anywhere. Like, how far have we come in string theory? We're still in the same place. Yeah. And that they have to like invent dimensions and these other things to make it fit their conclusion. Um, yeah. But there's nothing like tangible, right? Yeah. Nothing tangible that we've used to then help society, whether it be engineering or right. Other, these things like where is string theory got us? Do we have some device that allows us to do something new or no? So that's yeah. that's his argument. And I'll be honest. He's kind of on an island. There's not a lot of scientists that agree with him. He's kind of alone. Right, in this okay. uh sort of thinking um so make of it what you will um i'll i'll try to find that link um that i'm talking about where i explored it further on vetted and i'll put it in so people can take a look at that and see what they think of it but yeah i mean that essentially maybe we were working on anti-gravity because of ufo reverse engineering and then we just stopped right okay okay you know, for some okay. reason so again some sort of conspiracy within the scientific community um so who knows but interesting really interesting i need to read yeah, very interesting yeah um all right let's see here i do i have one more oh yes okay so david, this... david crashed i mean david seems to know a lot about these scientific um issues as well yeah he talks yeah. really well doesn't he david grush like he does i, I right. believe what he says i don't uh, yeah i don't know if that's because he uses the correct lingo <laughs> But he's hugely engaging as well. I agree. I agree. And you, after you watch that two-hour thing, you're like, he just seems more relatable. And more, yeah. Um, he talks about his autism. He talks about yeah. his his past um, struggles 
uh, with suicide and PTSD and, wow. and that, and, and they go into it. Right. Cause remember, like we talked about it on the podcast, they, they tried to exploit that. Uh, one yeah, yeah, did, really, yeah really sadly. Yeah. So yeah. In those short clips you've shown me as well. I mean, I'm going off the point slightly, but you know, it's important to examine. Um, he seems a lot more open, like you've just said, he seems a lot more open and almost a bit more alive, which I think is going to help people understand his point a bit more. Um, but yeah, I, that was besides the point, but interesting no, to watch. I agree. I agree. I think that's important because a lot of people are attacking his character. Yeah, exactly. Attacking yeah. him, not attacking his claims. They're attacking yeah. him. Right. Not his claims, not what he's saying. He's saying, go yeah. look here. This is who you talk to. Yeah. This is where it is. No, they're like, well, what about you? You're the da -da -da. Well, wait a second. Who cares? I mean, if someone's yeah. pointing out a house fire and trying to call the fire department, right? There's a fire. There's a house on fire. Call the fire department. <laughs> you don't go to. Well, why are you wearing those shoes? Why is your hair that way? What did you what's your history like? You're like, who cares what that house yeah. is on fire? I mean, that's essentially how I see it, you know? Um, yeah. But anyway. Um, all right. This is. Let me see if. If this is OK, no, no, that's not it. All right. So, yeah, that's it on on David Grush. Um, I was going to. Um, show this um, quick. Uh, from Jeremy Corbell that I spoke about. <laughs> um, so again, check out the um, Jesse Michaels interview. Again, we'll put a link to it. Check it out if you want to. Uh, if you just want to see the first five minutes, um, you know, check out a video I made. Uh, you can watch it there or just click on it and watch the first five minutes. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an update on that. There's another interview going to come out with David Grush shot around the same time so in that two hour documentary jesse michaels is working with another youtuber from a channel called yes theory very big channel and they are making their own separate documentary with interviews with david grush and and you know that's going to come out when i don't know so we'll everyone's waiting for that one we'll see what happens so apparently he's going to start coming out and doing more things you know more yeah. Good. More podcasts, more talking. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll get him on vetted. Mr. David Grush. Who knows? You never know. Um, but anyway, Jeremy Corbell tweeted this out um yesterday. Yeah, he said, um, so right here, uh, when Congress comes back into session in early September, it will be considering a broad range of UAP legislation, which are in the Senate version of the 2024 combined NDAA and IAA. In the post below, I've pulled out each of the UAP uh, related provisions and you can, you know, I'll put a link to this so you can see it. It's a bunch of stuff, bunch of tweets. We're not going to go over all that. That's a lot. But basically, Jeremy Corbell's oh, response to that is excellent breakdown of why this UAP legislation being deliber deliberated right now is so important for UAP transparency. Why this coming week is so important. Today, read and understand. Tomorrow, take action. Go, go, UFO. Uh, <laughs> go, go, UFO. I, I like that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, this is what we're looking for. Yeah. Right? This is what people want. Um, they're clearly taking it more serious. And we'll see what happens. So, what do y'all think? Okay. I think I think he's right. Yeah, I think he's totally right. Uh, I'd like to read that e uh, email thread, Twitter or X <laughs> thread uh, to see what actually what the main points are. It's always useful to have them summarized like that. But yeah, interesting. Um, read now, and take action later. I like it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, here, I'll uh, let me see here if I can uh, copy link. Okay. I mean, I'll put a link to it so you guys can read it too, but Amy, I'll, I'll just send it there through Slack. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. it's, it's a long thread. You know how people do that on Twitter. They do like add all these things and it can take forever to read out of Twitter needs to do something about that. Cause that to me is so confusing to like stay in line. I don't know what's going on. I've tried to do that myself and I screw it up and all the tweets go everywhere. I don't know how to connect them all. Um, can't just like make one post. 
Yeah. You got to make 87 of them and connect them all. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So, yeah, that's it um, for this. Well, let's see what legislation that can be even expected, yeah. right? So, I mean, there's lots of unknowns there, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We still have Chuck Schumer in that um, that huge piece of legislation they were trying to put in of this 300-day UFO study, right? Having this panel made up of sociologists, scientists, you know, government officials to sort of decide what should be disclosed to the public yeah. from what they uncover about UAP. Um, and the language includes, you know, non human and ships and you know spaceships and all this stuff you know an eminent domain um uh, for private aerospace companies meaning they can just go in and take things they have you know from the government standpoint uh like the rail like we did with the railroads here in america back in the day um taking all the land to build the railroads across america we just took the land eminent domain was it's private property not anymore it's ours yeah. Um, so yeah, they're wanting to do that, um, if they have it and they're giving them like 30 days after the legislation is passed to, to come clean. Uh, yeah. otherwise they're going in. So who knows? I don't know. Um, that's one big piece, but yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Interesting. So, yeah. Really. So yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Take out, check out the David Grush interview. Um, you know, look into more of the Mexican UFO or alien stuff. Again, I'll do a follow up video to kind of just summarize it all and bring it all together. Um, and we'll see if this Tyson uh, Grush debate happens. Um, I'm actually kind of curious about that, so I will keep an eye on that. See if there's anything from that. Maybe more people will try to throw in money into the pot and sweeten it i mean i think it would have to get to it could get to a certain monetary point where neil degrasse tyson just yeah. can't avoid it to some extent you know but maybe he doesn't like to feel pressured into do that and be guilted by charity to do something i don't know right uh, i'm not trying to speak for him but anyway yeah that's all i got guys ufos aliens Great. Big always big weeks because like every week we say big week <laughs> i know it's <laughs> like uh there's just a lot happening right now y'all this has definitely been the biggest um for news for ufos i mean for sure the last really since david grush came out yeah as soon as he came out it's just been it. a whirlwind of driving yeah absolutely yeah 100 so yeah that's it guys on bedded thank you guys so much for watching please leave your comments down below hit the like button that helps a lot uh share this if you like ask us any questions happy to answer them and as always thank you for the support and for watching <laughs>